our family has farmed oysters here for nearly 80 years and water quality has probably been the most prominent discussion point for all that time. To grow oysters you need to have a pristine estuary and we've been waving the red flag for the problems in the estuary here for a long time and it wasn't until the sort of CMA came along and there was a government agency actually listening to us that we actually started to see some action happening on the riverbanks and this fence here has been something that we've been waiting for for nearly 30, 40 years to try and keep the cows off the mangroves um, because the biological and ecological impact that the cows were having was actually reducing water quality and reducing fish habitat um, for this area. We were looking at having old infrastructure and tar tarred infrastructure on our work sites which was a problem and we needed to be able to get rid of it and there was a problem getting rid of that at the tip sites and things like that around uh, the Shire. We also had issues with feral Pacific oysters in the river, um, in the rumour and a couple of other estuaries up and down the coast. And so we were worried commercially that this was going to cause us a lot of an increased cost in handling those issues. When we first joined the oyster industry, we found that um, farmers were quite reactionary to issues that were potentially threatening their livelihood, particularly related to water quality. Um, we found that when an issue arose, we needed to be in contact with council straight away and um, it was quite an adversarial relationship that we had with them at that stage. By nature of their industry, oyster farmers are actually quite environmentally conscious. They rely on good water quality for good product. However, in the past, they've generally operated on an individual farm basis rather than as a collective group, um, being able to collectively voice their concerns to the community and to government. So that could be Tasmanians and New South, South Australians and New South. We found that um, working collaboratively was a really um, good system and at the same time the Southern Rivers Catchment Management Authority came in and helped us develop estuary-wide environmental management systems. And an EMS at its most simplest uh, is a process whereby farmers identify all the risks and potential impacts uh, of their operation and surrounding uh, activities uh, on the estuary and then put in place actions to address those risks. So it's a, it's a terrific simple process where farmers can start to work to improve uh, the environmental quality of the estuaries and, and take ownership and action in improving uh, those estuaries over time. So it, the, the EMS has had a, a flow on effect for not just us as within the industry, but for the estuary's health at, at large. The next step was the implementation and CMA putting on an EMS implementation officer really got that ball rolling. And so now for two rivers on the south coast, there is an online mapping system where farmers can go on, identify a lease area, they can find out who's monitoring at points around their leases, they can find out what's in and around their catchment, if there's acid sulphate soils risks or urban areas, and they can even access data from the monitoring done by these different agencies online. Through a um, group of swans that might just be swimming. And we have built a catchment model trailer as well and um, that's utilised to just show the flow of things through the catchment so that it's really easy for people to understand, particularly the school kids, how it's all linked together and that the oyster farmers are the end users of the water that flows through the catchment. The most important thing is good water quality, so making sure our water is clean and healthy. And what can we do to make sure our water is clean and healthy? Marty. So growers here, not only in Wagonga River, but also up and down the south coast, have changed their production technologies dramatically since the 2000s and the mid-2000s when we started along this road. And uh, there's a lot of basket technology floating and long line structures, a lot of plastic trays. They're catching oysters on plastic material, buying hatchery oysters. Changing the way we produce oysters made a big difference to the overall impact that we were having on, on the estuary. It promotes seagrass. Seagrass is one of oysters' best friends. And as far as productivity, by changing our practices, we've actually changed how productive we can be within the industry as well.
In terms of raising our profile, in the beginning many farmers were not keen to promote the environmental works that we were doing. I've now seen that attitude change. Um, now they celebrate the projects, they celebrate uh, the good work they've been doing on the river to improve the industry and improve the water quality as a whole. The industry has identified that one of the best things it can do to capitalise on the environmental management system work uh, is to uh, achieve some form of regional branding. They've taken this idea and run with it and come together under the, the banner Australia's Oyster Coast. Uh, Australia's Oyster Coast, it's a terrific initiative. It incorporates every major oyster growing estuary between the Shoalhaven and the New South Wales Victorian border. Uh, and it's the only region in the world where every major estuary operates under an internationally recognised environmental management system. To be recognised as the world's most sustainable oyster industry, that's what it's about. Australia's Oyster Coast has a clear plan to create more jobs and economic growth on the South Coast. We want to raise the value of our industry by at least 20% in the next few years. We're lucky enough to have these great waterways and be able to grow amazing oysters and we're working hard to protect, protect that.